Hi everybody, this is Ginger, and you're watching Gnostic Psych, the place where I share with you the arcane and interesting related to psychology. And today we're talking about uh, Edward Bernays and how he used psychoanalytic psychology to influence people for the U.S. government and corporate advertising. You may not have heard of him, but you're exposed to his seven propaganda devices that he promoted whenever you watch commercials on network TV, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and Facebook. So who was Edward Bernays? He was born in Vienna, Austria in 1891 and died in the United States in 1995. Um, he was actually the nephew of Sigmund Freud. Um, he had moved to New York City when he was young, and when he was beginning his newfound public relations uh, field job, uh, Bernays read his uncle's theory on uh, psychology and was fascinated by the subconscious mind and its hidden desires. In 1917, then President Woodrow Wilson created the Committee on Public Information, or CPI, for disseminating anti-German propaganda to the American public. It was also called the Creel Committee after the journalist George Creel, who was basically the head of the CPI at the time. Prior to this, Americans were actually against the U.S. involvement in World War I, since it was a European war, and there had always been a belief among Americans that um, U.S. government should not involve itself in foreign entanglements. Um, but Woodrow Wilson basically wanted us to join the war on the side of the British. Uh, so Bernays got his start working on the committee. Um, he and other propagandists wrote fake stories about atrocities committed by German soldiers. Germans began to be referred to as Huns after Attila the Hun, and they were portrayed as on enlistment posters as savages and apes. Within a year, the American public were supporting involvement in the war. In 1920, Bernays wrote his now famous book, Propaganda, which is used to this day in PR courses in business schools. And again, this techniques are used in any kind of advertisement you see. A year later, in 1929, he began his most famous advertising campaign. Bernays was hired by president of the American tobacco company, George Washington Hill, to expand the cigarette market to women. Uh, prior to this, women uh, who smoked were regarded as prostitutes or being easy. Uh, so there was a social taboo for women to smoke. Bernays enlisted the help of a psychoanalyst named Dr. A. A. Brill to figure out what cigarettes symbolically represented to women. Um, according to Brill's research, um, more often than not, um, cigarettes symbolized male power in the minds of women. Uh, during the 1920s, uh, women were pushing for more rights. Um, they just gotten the right to vote. Uh, so Bernays decided to start an advertising campaign for Lucky Strikes called Torches of Freedom, which associated female emancipation with smoking cigarettes, the subconscious symbol of male power. The campaign compared smoking Lucky Strikes to being a revolutionary against the patriarchy. Bernays' techniques for influencing mass populations by appealing to subconscious emotions was so effective that Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, used the techniques to, de to demonize Jews, gypsies, and other, others deemed undesirable by the Nazi government. This would not be the last time that Bernays' work was used as psychological warfare. In 1954, Bernays was hired by the United Fruit Company to create a news media campaign against the Guatemalan president uh, Jacobo Guzman Arbenz. Arbenz's government had heeded fruit workers' appeals for humane working conditions and higher pay by nationalizing the United, United Fruit Company's land holdings. The uh, United Fruit Company wanted a change in the Central American country's leadership, in particular shareholder Alan Dulles, who was the CIA director at the time. Under Bernays' supervision, the CIA used a mass psychological warfare campaign to portray Arbenz as a communist who was allied with the USSR. The CIA Psy War program worked in tandem with funding and arming Arbenz's opposition forces led by Carlos Castillo Armas. Arbenz was overthrown by Armas and his army, after which the United Fruit Company's land holdings were privatized and the fruit picking peasants who advocated for better treatment were murdered by Armas's death squads. So what are the seven techniques that Bernays has promoted for influencing the public? Well, they are testimonial, bandwagon, 
plain folks, transfer, name calling, card stacking, and glittering generalities. The first one, testimonial, is using well-known or credible figures to influence a target audience. Uh, for example, using like an actor or a sports figure. Bandwagon is used to generate the fear of missing out on a certain event, sale, or membership in a desired group. Uh, plain folks is using seemingly everyday people to endorse a product or a candidate in order to show to others who identify that what is being endorsed will work for them. Transfer is used to, to subconsciously tie emotional associations between a product, person, or population with a completely unrelated concept. A perfect example was Bernays' Torches of Freedom campaign. Card stacking is, is using selected information in order to influence people with an incomplete narrative about a product, person, or population. Like, for example, they'll talk about some new feature for the product or new company policy that um, may appeal to the public, but they won't talk about um, the downside of making that change will be. Name calling is used to put down or denigrate a competitor, another person, or population. And last, glittering generalities uses loaded words and strong slogans in order to leave an emotional impact on the audience. Well, that's all I have. Uh, if you like this video, please click the like button, or if you want to subscribe for more videos like this, please click subscribe. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks.